Hey guys, greetings from Vancouver, Canada. It is week two of my MIT challenge, which is to learn MIT's four-year computer science curriculum in 12 months without taking any classes or even being enrolled at MIT. So this last week, uh, I completed multivariable calculus. This is the third course that I've finished. Uh, I started on Monday and I wrote the exam on Friday. Now I've been getting a lot of questions about people of saying, how do you watch through 30 hours of lectures in about two days? And the answer I've been getting is that it's a lot easier if you speed it up so you're watching them about two times the speed. So the way you can actually do that is if you go to the links that I provide below to the MIT's OpenCourseWare uh, platform, you can download the videos as an MP4 file and then use VLC player to play them at a faster speed. So you can watch them faster and it doesn't alter the pitch so that you can watch them and the person sounds almost normal. But they're just speaking at a faster rate so it's progressing a lot more quickly. Now, this is the third technical class that I have completed. I did physics, single variable calculus, and multivariable calculus, all within about a four or five day time span. And today I wanna to share with you my idea for how you can learn math classes more quickly. So there's two basic parts to math. The first part is the one that most people focus on, and that's the technique of doing math. So for example, algebra, factoring, all those sorts of things, which is the mathematical technique of moving around variables and the rules you need to follow, the formulas you need to use. That's what most students focus on. They'll try to memorize these formulas, really master the, the technique of doing math. And I have to say that that takes a little bit of time to do, but it's mostly about putting in the effort. As long as you put in enough practice problems, you'll eventually learn the techniques. But there's a second component to math which can really make the difference between being a struggling math student, someone who doesn't get math, and someone who can learn very quickly. And that's the intuition behind math. So I gave a little example uh, which is from the class I just took. Now just, just be warned, if you haven't done calculus before, this example may seem a little bit more high level, but I wanted to pick something from the course that I just took so you can see what I'm actually learning in these classes. So this right here is the Jacobian. And the Jacobian is this little area right here, but it's basically a formula for substituting variables in double integrals. And if none of that made sense, that's fine. It's, it's a later part in calculus, so it'll make sense if you've gone through the prerequisite material. But basically, the idea is that this looks kind of like an odd formula. You're looking at it, there's no real obvious reason, rhyme or reason of why it would be this way. And it looks like something that you just have to memorize. However, there is an intuition behind the idea. There is an a, a intuition of why this must be the case. And if you think about it, if you actually walk through the intuition, the intuition is that this is representing the area of a square. And this is the translated coordinates, and it's the area of a parallelogram. And because u and v are functions of x and y, or x and y are functions of u and v, you can use the determinant to figure out the area of this parallelogram. Now, that might also seem kind of abstract if you haven't done this before, but it's basically a visual association between translating squares into parallelograms. And if you know, for example, another intuition you could have is the determinant is how you find out the area of a parallelogram. You just take two of the sides as vectors and you do the determinant and it tells you what the area of this is. Now, this might seem really complicated. This might seem like, well, how am I supposed to look at this formula and understand that you know it's squares and parallelograms because that's not obvious from the from the formula but the answer is that the teachers actually will give this visual intuition to you they will explain it to you and say this is what you should be trying to picture mentally when you're walking through the course so i've been using mit's open courseware and in the actual lect lectures for mit's uh, calculus 2, they explain this visual intuition so that you wouldn't have to just memorize the formula you could understand the the idea behind it but there's also some online resources that are completely free where they have really good teachers who can help explain this visual intuition. So for example, Khan Academy. Khan Academy is great because Solomon Khan gives really good visual descriptions of a lot of these abstract math concepts. Uh, BetterExplained.com is one of my personal favorites. The library isn't quite as large, but really good articles on calculus and vector calculus. And also Patrick JMT has a lot of videos on YouTube for explaining math tutorials. So if you're having trouble with a math concept, those are good places to start if you're looking for well, what might be a visual intuition or a geometric interpretation in order to better understand this math concept. 
Now, that's the first part, finding a good teacher, finding someone who can explain, you know, this is sort of the intuition you should be getting about the idea, because that can save a lot of time rather than trying to come it up, up with it by yourself. But the second part is you actually have to walk through that visual intuition in your head. If you don't, if you just try to, you know, take notes and you follow the lecture, but you don't actually walk through the idea in your head, then you won't actually have that intuition. You may understand the proof, but you don't actually see it mentally. So my challenge to you is that the next time you're in a math class, look for those visual intuitions. Look for those ways that someone helps describe why a formula is the way it is. And if you don't find one in your class, use those resources I described, but then go further. Actually walk through the intuition and the analogy behind the intuition in your head so that you can see what they're trying to discuss. This will save you a lot of work in memorizing because if you understand one concept, then you've already memorized this formula. You don't have to memorize every single component, what sort of pattern it has. You just automatically understand why the formula has to be this way. So that's my advice for you when taking math. Look for visual intuitions. If they don't have one in your class, seek out the resources for it and then walk through it in your head. Now next week, I'm going to be doing Physics 2, Electricity and Magnetism, so wish me luck on that.